up guys it's melody welcome or welcome back to my channel today i'm going to talk about the six books i read in the month of january so let's get started this month was kind of romance heavy like so so i would say there's definitely romance in all the books i read i'll just say that the first book i read in the month of january was anatomy a love story by dana schwartz i'll have a picture right over here this was a really fun book. I gave it three and a half stars. I'm starting to realize that my initial star rating that I give the book right after reading it is much different from what I would give it after, you know, giving it some time. I don't know. Anyway, I gave Anatomy three and a half stars. I think that one is pretty accurate. It says in the title that this is a love story. However, that's not my favorite part about this book. This book is set in 1817 Edinburgh and we're following a main character. Her name is Hazel and she really wants to be a surgeon. And it's mostly about that. It's about digging up bodies so that she can practice being a surgeon on these bodies. There's a lot of that, you know, spooky gore aspect to this book. A lot of talk about how surgery was done back in the day, which I find fascinating. And I really thought the atmosphere of the book was something to take note of. It was really, really great, very gothic. I liked it. And then of course there is the love story aspect of this book, which that wasn't my favorite. I thought the love interest boy who was a grave digger, by the way, well, what was he called? He wasn't called a grave digger. He was somebody who what, a body snatcher? I don't know. He dug up graves to harvest the bodies to sell to surgeons. That was a love interest. He wasn't my favorite. I just felt like he wasn't nearly as rounded out as our main character was. Their love story was okay, but it didn't make me feel too, too much. And that's why the rating went down a little bit is just because the romance didn't speak to me as much as the rest of the story. But other than that, like I said, I really liked it. It's all about our main character wanting to be a surgeon in a time where women were not allowed to be surgeons. And there's also a sickness kind of plaguing the people of Edinburgh. It's really good. And there's a bit of a mystery to it. It's a good mix of very realistic Edinburgh in the early 1800s, but also a little bit of, you know, fiction thrown in there. So that's all I'm going to say about that. The next book I read was The Siren of Sussex by Mimi Matthews. I originally started this book on audio. My hold ran out, so I went to Barnes & Noble and picked it up. And as you can see, I tabbed a little bit of the rest of the book, but definitely I read 80% via audiobook. So I really liked this book. Um, I read two strictly romance novels in January and both of them were very much to my taste. So let me explain. The reason why I liked this book so much and I gave it a solid four stars is for a couple of reasons. First of all, we're in 1880s England, not 1880s, sorry, 1860s England. And we have our main character here. Her name is Evelyn Maltravers. And she is, you know, going to London for the season to try to find a husband. It's one of those. I love Regency romances. This isn't set in Regency era, but you know what I mean? And because it's set in 1860s England, the fashion is very different. There's bigger skirts, there's more ruffles and rouging. And it's just, in my opinion, a bit more immaculate designs to the dresses and the gowns. And I love that. And I mentioned that because the love interest in this book, his name is Mr. Malik. He is a dressmaker. So we get a lot of talk about fashion in this book. And I really, really love the fashion of the 19th century in England. I thought it was just beautiful. Well, it was quite a time for dresses, let me just say that. Anyway, so we get a lot of talk about that. Our love interest, Ahmed, is half British, half Indian. So it's definitely a forbidden romance, kind of a trope between the poor dressmaker, tailor, Ahmed, who is part Indian and our, you know, high lady in society, um, Evelyn, who is trying to, you know, marry for 
fortune for her family and that sort of thing. It's, it's all about that. It's very good. And the other thing is, as you can see on the cover, Miss Maltravers has a horse and she loves horses and horseback riding. And that is one of the ways that she feels like she can truly express herself and where she is the most confident is on her horse. And I really like that. I'm a self-proclaimed horse girl through and through. I love horses. I love books with any kind of horse content in them. And that is why I felt like this romance was simply tailored to me personally with the 1860s, the dressmaker, the horses, all of that just made this book four stars. So I really enjoyed it. The third book I read in January was Pride and Premonition by Tears of Price, I think is how you say that. This one I listened to the audiobook as well. And this was just a three star book. Honestly, it was a little bit boring in my opinion. Um, the premise of this book is that it is Pride and Prejudice with all the same characters, I think set a little bit later in time. We're still in the 1800s, but I want to say it's more like late 1800s. I'm not sure about that one, but I think. Anyway, this is a murder mystery novel first and foremost. But the thing is, we are using the same characters that we know and love from Pride and Prejudice. So you can only imagine, our main character is Lizzie. Darcy pops up. We already know that that's her love interest. And we already know who the scummy characters are. So it's just like, it's so easy to predict. That's the problem with it. It is so easy to predict this book. And the murder mystery itself wasn't intriguing enough to stand up to the fact that readers would probably guess who the bad guys are. I mean, it wasn't terrible. It was still entertaining, but it was three stars. It just, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Now, the fourth book I read is from Blood and Ash. Here's my copy. I have a shelf silhouette in it, and you can't even tell because I used burgundy tabs, but you can kind of see that I tabbed it up. Anyway, there it is <laughs> back there. I reread From Blood and Ash last month. Kind of on a whim, I just really felt in the mood for a fantasy romance. And From Blood and Ash, in my humble opinion, is one of the better ones. I really, really enjoy that story. There's a lot of criticism to that book series. I get it, I totally do, but it's kind of like, you read it because it's not that great, but it is hella entertaining, you know what I mean? And that is exactly, what From Blood and Ash is to me, it is just so entertaining. It was 2021 in November when I listened to the audiobook of From Blood and Ash for the first time. And oh my gosh, that first read sent me reeling. And the second reread, I, I felt the exact same way. And Jennifer did a great job. Like I was conflicted both times reading this book. And I'm left like wondering what to feel. It is just such a wild ride and I love it. So I gave this book four and a half stars. Honestly, is it a five star book? I, it kind of depends on how the rest of the series goes. For example, when I read Throne of Glass, the first couple books were like four star books, but then later in the series, when I started to get really, really into it, Looking back at those four star ratings, I'm like, nah, they were five stars. They were five stars. I just didn't know it yet. Do you know what I mean? I feel like that might be the case for the From Blood and Ash series. We'll see. But anyway, I loved being able to tab the book this time around. There's a lot of things I forgot about this world that I'm glad I revisited again. And I am just excited to keep going. The second book is also a reread and then I'll be reading new stuff and I'm really excited. It's been a blast. Anyway, moving on. The fifth book I read in January was The Bromance Book Club by Lissa K. Adams. I listened to this book so quickly, mostly because it was for a book club and <laughs> I didn't know what book we were reading until like the day before. So anyway. <laughs> This is the other romance novel I read this month that truly felt like it was my taste again. I feel like this is a popular romance book, but if you've never heard of it, this is a romance novel where we're following the man and the relationship, in this case, Gavin, 
and he is trying to win back his wife and to do so he joins this exclusive book club with some of his other guy friends called the bromance book club and basically these men read romance novels to better understand their women and you know become better lovers in that way so that's basically the premise i love that already is it highly unlikely that a bromance book club would ever exist Yes, but but it is so much fun to read about men who truly, truly care about their women and are striving actively to learn about them and to become better partners. And it is so refreshing. It is so pure and sweet. It melts my heart. It really does. And they're really funny about it. Like men talking about romance books and how they react to them and all this stuff and all the jokes. It was so funny. This was laugh out loud funny for me at times. And that's part of the reason why I love this book so much was it was so funny. And the other thing is that Gavin is a professional baseball player. And I love baseball players. Like out of all the athletes in the world, I would pick a baseball player. If I could, I would pick baseball. So that was just to my taste, like perfectly. And the other thing about the baseball thing that I just felt like was extra interesting was the wags aspect of being in a relationship with a professional ball player. Um, wags, if you don't know, stands for wives and girlfriends of professional athletes. And so it's this whole kind of club or community of women who are dating or married to professional athletes. And there's a whole bunch of drama that goes into that as well. There was a TV show on for a while there, I think on E! and it was called WAGS and I remember watching it and just being fascinated with these women and how their lives were very dramatic. It was definitely trash TV but I really enjoyed it and so like seeing that in a book I was like oh my gosh! I like remembered that show and I, I just enjoyed that added drama to this book. Anyway, that's a whole spiel on WAGs. And another thing I liked about this book was that for me personally, it was my first marriage in trouble romance where we're following a couple that's already married. I really liked it. It was just made it more interesting to me. The stakes are a lot higher in books like this because you know, they have kids, you know, and they, they're trying not to just fix themselves, but to fix a family. I loved it. I really did. I really, really like this book. I gave it four and a half stars. It might be a five star book, but I need a little bit more time, I think, to decide. I need to read a few more romances to know for sure. And the last book I read in January was this guy right here, One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. I got this book because I read a book by Karen last year, The Cousins, and I really liked that one. And also this is a TV show now and I really wanted to read the book before watching the TV show because I kind of like comparing and contrasting books and TV shows. Anyway, so I picked this one up on audio mostly. I tagged a few pages in it just to, you know, help keep things straight in my head. Uh, I gave this book at the end of the day three stars. Oh, it was kind of disappointing and not what I expected from Karen after reading The Cousins, to be honest. This is like the Breakfast Club meets a whodunit kind of murder mystery kind of a thing. These four students who barely cross paths and you know, their high school social lives end up in detention and one of the students in detention dies. It's right at the beginning of the book in the first few chapters, we witness the death that happens in this book. And then after that, I feel like it just gets boring, I guess, a little bit. It seems oddly focused on a romance between two of the characters instead of it being, you know, a mystery thriller. It was kind of a cliche romance too. It was the bad boy with the smart girl, the unlikely pairing of them. It was just like, whatever. I didn't really care that much about it. And then we seem to be so focused on that, that when the climax happened, the climax seemed to last like this long. It was just so short and it went by really quickly. And when I pick up a book like this, I just expect more thriller and less romance, but unfortunately it seemed the other way around for me. I don't know. It was just kind of lackluster 
just kind of fell flat. It wasn't that exciting. Just a three-star book. Like, I was entertained. I had a decent time with it, but overall I was kind of let down. And now I'm even more excited <laughs> to watch the TV show to see if they did it better. I do think a story like this would make a good TV show. I do. So I am excited to watch that. I might make a video reacting to the TV show, so possibly stay tuned for that. But I guess that's it. That is the last book I read in January. I hope you guys like this video. Thank you so much for being here. Subscribe if you feel so inclined, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!